Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, it's Jeremy Ward. Today, I have the honor to interview William Troutman with Certainty Home Inspections. Hello. Uh, I got into business in about 2006, and William was well on his way up and going in home inspections at that point. And uh, we've done a lot of business together over the last, I guess, sure it's 17, 18 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how's things going for you? Good. We've uh, we've been blessed. You know, we, we were chatting before this about the business and how uh, I was coaching folks. I was telling you about that, and so everybody's like, you know, what's the secret to success? And that and that straight line to success. I'm right. Like, it's a straight line, straight this way, straight that way. Straight. <laughs> and so, uh, but we've been truly blessed. We've uh, grown and fell back and grown again, and and uh, and, and this great, you know, COVID hit. Yeah. Um, so that kind of set everybody back a little bit, including us. So we've been on a. A rebuild kind of since that point, but I've uh, been blessed with it. Cover all Southern Indiana, Louisville, Kentucky, Little Metro Louisville. So. Yeah, I've watched you guys just continue to seem like you always add more services in, more coverage areas, just always trying to add more value to the inspection That's and right. to your clients. That's right. Yeah, I just uh, recently started doing sewer scoping, you know, um, the tell, drone. Tell me about that sewer scope a little bit. Um, so it's basically a camera that you, if you've got a clean out that's accessible, um, then we'll shoot that out to the street to see what that pipe looks like. And especially if you're dealing with older old mm-hmm. cast iron piping, you know, it's all beyond this life expectancy. So even though it looks good, you know, in the house. Right. Like, Right. Like under, and even new construction, you know, they build these new homes and then drive these dump trucks full of rocks over the, <laughs> over the drain lines. You get these bellies, whatever. So this is a smart move. I, you know, a lot of clients had asked about it over mm-hmm. the years. And we, ah, you know, get a plumber. Well, plumbers are pretty pricey. Yes. And so so we just added like like, like it's 159 bucks. To add oh, that's cheap. It looked like 249 to have a plumber come out and do it. So yeah. Um, so we uh, do those quite often. Um, that has been a great added service, as well as, you know, uh, we started flying the drones because I can't okay. get on that. Seems to be a big deal. I, I had the bigger drones, you know, when they first came out. That they right, right, huge. right. Yeah. And uh, and then they come out where you had to have licings on it. <laughs> These little drones, they're phenomenal. The cameras mm-hmm. are phenomenal. And they fit in your hand. You don't really have to be licensed. So so we use those quite a bit when it's a two, two two store. store. Yeah. yeah. Well, it really has changed the game, what they're able to do with these drones in, yeah. in several aspects. I yeah. mean, we've used yeah. them for the photography for a while now, but I, you know, I'm watching them spray crops with them and, and right. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, talk about the real estate market. These, when they're flying them through the home, oh my Lord, man, it, what a difference that makes. It is. Yeah. It is. It's a pretty yeah. good, pretty cool shot. So yeah, you said you've done the uh, drones, you've done the, um, the sewer line inspections now, which I think that's super cheap. I think yeah. I had to have somebody come out as a plumber. You know, I'm always finding crushed lines. Like you yeah. say, they've driven over them or like there's a water maple in the front yard that's found its that. way through the clay. Uh, but no, that's a, that's a huge service. Yeah, it's going to turn around for us. You, know, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on these cameras. Like we even locate there where the issue is where you need to dig. We don't, we don't do that. The cameras we use are like 700 bucks or something. Right. Like fairly affordable. So right. we make our money back quick, you know, fairly quickly on those. So we don't have to have the charge. That the, and then our company, you know, we've been at it long enough. I don't have any overhead. You know, we're, mm-hmm. you know, thank goodness I'll pay for it. So I'm not trying to, you know, make car payments. And <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. So we're able to keep our prices down. Talking about new services, though, uh, one thing I'm really thrilled about, we just started doing HUD certifications. Okay. So, uh, manufactured home, make sure the are mm-hmm. tied down, any additions to the home, and then first placement is what they're after. So you could do, like, the structural that's inspection right. to make sure that that's, the that's double right. wide or manufactured homes right, right. on the right pillars, got the right tie downs. That's right. You know, you probably knew Bill Ager back in the day. Yeah, had, I love Bill, man. You know, Bill, structural local standard engineer. He, he, he had talked to me once about helping him out, and I guarantee this is what he was talking about. I'll, Bill, you know, we're just so busy. Well, not for book love, but it's a pretty pretty snap to do. We just gather all the info and photos and send, send it to the structural engineer, mm-hmm. and they come back or pass or fail it or whatever. So. Well, it's huge. I know, you know, every manufactured home we sell, we've got to have a structural inspection yeah. on it. Yeah. You guys are already there. You're already in the crawl That's space. Right. That's it, right. It makes sense, yeah. and it's a huge service to us because it's just another person we got to get involved if right. you can't do it. Right. So that that's awesome. I I didn't know you guys were doing yeah, that. Yeah, we kind of try to keep the price down, so because they get pricey, you know, you get that five hundred dollar work for some of those. So, so we try to try to keep that price down as well. I learned real quick, you know, somebody like the lender will call and say, "Hey, I need to know that it's structurally tied down." Mm-hmm. So we'll go out and do that, come back and submit that, and then the two weeks go by. Oh, well, we need to know about the addition. So now here's another trip charge. Right. So, uh, so we learned real quick whether. No matter what they're asking for, we just do all of them. Do it all. <laughs> <laughs> that way, you got, that way you keep that price down and just resubmit the report and have that fee instead of, you know, our 
our charge to go back. To go back, yeah. yeah. I mean, the time yeah. that you're tying up is yeah. longer to get out there than he is to do the job. That's, that's right. A lot of times that's true. That's true. So, What else yeah. has been going on? Anything big, fancy, uh, big just, plans? Um, uh, as far as our plans, just did we just, again, trying to uh, get back in the face, everybody's face again. Yeah. You know, I pulled back all the marketing, you know, through COVID, even took our marketing director out of the picture. So uh, Elena Silman's out there now just doing a killer job She's for us, good. relationship marketing and uh, getting back into uh, the swing of you know sponsorships and stuff like that mm -hmm. that we kind of stepped away of. So I've been really busy with that. So yeah, so really enjoy it. Yeah. Now it's uh, I've seen her at a um, open. Well, you all supported a brokers open we did. Yeah, I did. Um, I what last weekend I think last yeah. Friday Thursday something like yeah. that. I seen her out there. And yeah, she was super friendly, and that's when we got to talking. Yeah. And yeah. I was glad she's able to make it up here yeah. and talk with us today. So. Yeah, it's been, I guess we'd, I've been in the business since 06. You said you started, uh, you'd been doing home inspections before that. Yeah, and then actually we had to, you had to get licensed in 05. That's when Indiana said, hey, you got to become licensed. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And that's Asha. Is that Asha? Actually, we go through Nachi. Nachi kind of fell off. Um, that was, actually was a big deal there for a while. But Nachi is pretty well, it's a national association of certified home inspectors. What this is. And so all of your training, CE, pretty much all that's through that, mm -hmm. uh, which is really handy. You don't have to travel to Florida to, you know, to attend a class. Back in the day, the only one way to get that CE, and that was go. Yes. Uh, so today it's pretty much all online and what have you. So I so took a, uh, I worked at Ford Motor Company before I got into real estate. I took a, they were given, you know, they pay for education. Yeah. Nice. And I was getting interested in real estate, and I took a home inspector class. And it was by an inspector in Louisville there that actually had been approved to, to give the class. And, uh, you know, I did the inspection and did the class. I learned a lot from it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think you had to do at that time 250 home inspections under a licensed inspector before right. you could even get your license. Yeah. And I was working at Ford. It's like, man, I don't I don't think that that's going to work out. Right. That, it, to, that, to me, that was a big number at the yeah. time. Uh, but I will tell you, just taking that class taught me so much. You know, yeah. just about went out looking at homes with clients and stuff. Just, it's overwhelming. It is. There's a lot to I've look at. I've got a guy that's uh, we're trying to hire. This is his third try. And, you know, cost you money every time you do yeah. that. So I hope he doesn't lose heart. Super smart guy, and he's very capable. But that test is just uh, really tough, really tough. It's the same way with real estate. Like the test, I've seen agents that may have failed the test six or eight times get into real estate and just absolutely do an amazing right, job. Right. And I've seen people that uh, can pass it the first time and fall just fall on their face when it comes to putting it to work. So I, I totally get that. But back to the mentor part, you know, I wish, and you probably feel the same way for real estate agents, that really, I mean, appraisals, they have to do a year apprenticeship, you know. Mm -hmm. So so the, the big concern I see, you talk about the way things change, is today, you know, um, so when I when I became in 05, when I took like, so I went to Ivy Tech like three or four times a week and you inspected dang near every day and uh, you know boots on the ground type stuff. Well today it's all you know on that internet mm -hmm. and then they'll go pass that test. There may be like forty of them that walk through a couple of homes together and the instructor puts a sticky notes. This is an aluminum window. This is asbestos. <laughs> so um, so I so I hire guys that are already licensed and they think hey they're going to clock in and go to work. I'm like no this is at least six months running side by side with me before I ever. Your name's exactly. on it. Yeah. It's just too much, too too many balls to drop. I mean, you go into a home, and I tell the clients all the time. You know, we try to set some sort of expectations when we're we're writing yeah. these deals, even in a brand new home. Like if if, if the builder can get it ninety five percent correct, they've done a good job. Yes, sir. I mean, it's just human error. There's yes, so sir. many humans touching that house. You bet. During the building, and you know, yeah. and especially on resale, because all of us has went in and changed a plug, or we've sure. done something maybe not yeah. quite right, but right. it could be a big issue. You bet. And, uh, you know, and I see that the liability that you guys take on yeah. uh, by doing these inspections, yeah. you're really, there's a lot there. You're there really looking at a lot of stuff there that is. could bite yeah. you. Yeah. It's not only explaining what you did inspect, it's what you didn't inspect that's important, too. Because right. Because I just assume the whole envelope. And, of course, that's, but speaking of that, it's like, uh, you know, of course, the flip homes have been a nightmare for us. New construction right now is something you really got to be on your toes. Yes. It used to be. Love to do new construction. But today, man, if you're not on your toes... And, you know, back then, a lot of the builders were one man or had a crew, and that was them. Mm -hmm. And today, there's, like you said, there's just so many subcontractors in and out that slap stuff together. That, yeah, it's... Uh, it's hard to keep your hands that are yeah. around it while you're building. Yeah, absolutely. To, to keep it, absolutely. Yeah. Keep the quality up. But you bet. Luckily, you guys can come in and catch most of it. Yeah. You know, 
I always recommend even on new construction to get that home inspection because yeah, you know the builder wants it to be right too you I mean, right. they're not trying to get out of there and have you move in and have right. problems calling them on the weekends right. they'd rather go ahead and finish it right before closing right. you know saying that you may not agree with this but i've been preaching this for years now it's in, in my personal opinion the home inspection is in the wrong spot if we do this for the seller up front yep the seller can either disclose it all yes or fix what he wants yes. to do and we correct the report the first offer is a sold offer. A great example. Just did one uh, in Madison, Indiana. The buyer brought me in. The seller has an accepted offer on the home. He's getting ready to buy. So he's ready to pack his stuff and get out of there. I come in with the buyer. Nice place. Get in the crawl space. I got that four-letter word, mold. You know, <laughs> not bad, but a spot here and yeah. there. And the, and the buyer, as soon as that fell out of my mouth, the deal was done. It's over. And yeah. if, I, if I had come up there and done that for that seller first... That guy would be living in a house today, and he'd have moved on. I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot across the country these in, well, the NFTs transfers where they're they're using this Bitcoin money and such. Right. To, so when one of those sales, they've already done the appraisal, they've already done the inspections and the repairs. Title work's already done. Basically, you're just going to bid on the house, and within seven to eight minutes, that house will actually be in your name. How about that. Yeah. And I don't know why, like you're saying, that we don't go ahead and, and you know yeah. convince our sellers it's really to protect them and the buyer coming in, and it, let's get it out of the way. Less hassle, much faster. <laughs> and like you said, <laughs> a lot more money. I think uh, we I did a reel last week, and I was talking about the seller's disclosure. Like if it's on there and it's disclosed that there's an issue, right. they don't write it in their first offer. They can't ask to repair it. So to your point, it would be better to know what's going on, whether you're going to fix it or not. You right. at least disclose it. Right. Hey, this is what it is. It doesn't come back to bite you. Yeah, because yeah, nobody nobody likes losing that deal yeah. after everybody's excited. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's got absolutely. plans of moving, and then, oh, that home inspector came and found all these things, you know. And you know, the home, that's why home contract assassins, deal killers, all those labels, <laughs> that's because of where we are. If we yep. do this up front, we're everybody's hero, man. We eliminated, what's the number one deal killer in a home inspection? What is it? Mm. Come on. I'm going to, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, number one, man, I've seen some good ones. Uh, me too. Uh, I had a garage door It's a surprise, unplugged. man. It's a surprise. I had a That's garage the door unplugged one time, and they said it didn't work. In the picture, it showed the garage door opener unplugged. Oh, no. Nice. That was probably <laughs> me. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> What is the number one deal killer? It's a surprise. I don't care what it is. It's I don't surprise. care. I don't care if it's mold, a crack <laughs> heat exchanger in the furnace, whatever. It's a surprise. It's surprise, a surprise to the seller. That's true. You know, if the seller would have known that, he'd have probably a good example. I talk about heat exchangers. I had that very thing happen. And, and so there'd been some minor stuff at the home. We get to the furnace and the heat exchanger is obviously busted. And so I, and the buyers are with me. I'm like, oh, you got a crack heat exchanger. That's enough, man. I've heard enough. Let's just stop this deal. Yeah. And so then a lot of home inspectors, hey, I got, I'm got, i getting paid here. I've got no liability. This dude walks. But a good home inspector is going to say, hey, you know, this seller doesn't know this. If he, right. he's, not, he's living in here breathing in carbon monoxide. You right. think this guy's not going to fix this? Whether you buy this home or not. So uh, being level-headed about it. But, yeah, it's a surprise. I don't care what it is. And, th and then the definition of a defect. You know, that depends on which right. side of the cell you're standing Yes. In. The material defect conversation. Yeah. We have that a lot. <laughs> I've lived here 30 years. That hasn't been an issue to me, you know. So, uh, and to the buyer, everything's a defect. To the agent, something's a defect so we can get it fixed and get to the closing, right? There you go. There you go. We've got to give and take on something. Yeah, yeah. So, you've been doing this for a long time, and I can vouch for your experience. You do a really good job. Thank you. What has been something that stood out for you over the last few? What's the most memorable home inspection you've ever done? So, something that happened. Oh, wow. Well, there's a lot of memories there. <laughs> I tell you, I, had, I hadn't been inspecting too long, maybe a couple of years or so. And I was doing, at that time, trying to get any kind of job I could. So we would do a lot of uh, one-year warranty. We'd send out letters to somebody that bought a new home. We'd try to, one-year warranty's coming up, let us inspect. So this young kid, he's probably mid-20s, nice house. And I'm doing my thing, and I, he's got it upstairs. And he's got an attic door that you just open to walk into, but he's got it padlocked. And so he's there with me. I'm like, you want me to get in here or not? He's like, do you have to go in there? I'm like... I don't care if I go in there or not. It's your your place. I'll just disclaim it. So reluctantly, he opens this thing. Up. Uh -oh. Walk in there. Yeah, you don't see any rafters. She, everything is completely covered in aluminum foil. About fifteen grow lights, <laughs> plants about this tall, covering the whole room. Yeah. So uh, it's a funny story. But not not long after that, I'm at a continuing ed class, and somebody asked the question, "Well, if you find something illegal in a home, what do you do?" And the instructor's like, "Well, you excuse yourself. You go out the car and call the cops." I'm like. This guy's got your number. He knows where you live. <laughs> He's got your name. So I don't know if that was the greatest advice, but yeah. Um, so that was probably one of the first things that happened. Here, here recently, new construction. Um, 
slab home, going around the outside, and I notice that there's a wet spot on the slab, you know, coming down the wall, water from somewhere. And so I'm investigating that and looking at it. Right above that, there's a GFCI receptacle. So I open up the weather cover, and water is just shooting out of the receptacle. <laughs> Stuff like that. You come across. Did it know. kill the GFCI? No. It didn't. Didn't. Well, I don't know. I didn't test it. <laughs> you didn't stick your finger uh, on it. I shouldn't say no. Maybe it was tripped. <laughs> At that point, I'm just writing it up. <laughs> or was it just coming out of a pipe? I'd have no idea. It was a slab home. Obviously, there was a ba- there was a bathroom on the oh, other side, it. so I'm sure some kind of plumbing to the shower or something. Who knows? But silly stuff like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's always something. I, you speaking of uh, drugs, We I went to show a home one time, and... Uh, I had the little family with me, and I knocked on the door, and the guy's like, oh, hold on, give me a minute. I was like, okay, we, we can wait outside. And he takes off out of the garage in like a big Escalade, just music blaring, rolls out. We go inside, and in the ashtrays, about a half a joint still smoldering. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you might want to leave your kids outside. There's, there's a little yeah. something going on in here. Exactly. <laughs> It just blows my mind. Like they knew we were coming. Yeah, Yeah, like it was a half million dollar home. Right. That brings up another great point. So I teach CE over at Bar and and getting ready to do it here at Sire. And so one of the classes I talk about is you know having the home prepared for the inspection. And so it just kills me that how many times that the listing agent fails to tell the seller that when the home inspection goes down, the buyer will probably be there with them. Right. Right. So you know you open up this door, (laughs) looks like a bomb's gone off in the house. There's Dog poop in the floor and sex toys on the bed, and, and you know, and the and the buyer is just, oh, this place was so immaculate, I can't believe it. Like you know, I'm like they didn't tell, they got to tell the seller you were coming, you know. So you to say quite a bit. Lots of room for activities in this house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, man, I've seen you know the strip poles in the mm-hmm. living room and yes, yeah, the, the swing in the closet and all that good stuff. Yeah, you'll see the mounts and stuff, and they're like, what's that for? I'm like, oh, I, I don't know, but I've seen them in other houses. Yeah. yeah. Must be a new fad. Yeah. Well, you know, it's their house, but you'd think they'd yeah. cover it up before we came. Yeah. But that's what makes it fun, you know. Yeah. You can tell stories. You know, that's that's when you wish you'd had the, the the camera on, right? Absolutely. I that wish I'd had my videographer with me on yeah. some of these that I've walked into because yeah. it, it would have been, yeah. it been about very viral. What's going on. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's what's going on. Making, yeah. Making videos. So. What areas do you cover? Give me a give me a scope. Here. So pretty much all southern Indiana, we go as far as I don't market Bedford, Madison, but we end up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I first started, you asked that question. When I first started, uh, got a license in 05, I thought, well, if I'm going to do this and follow my face, I'm not going to do it here. So I went to Seymour in Bedford, uh, <laughs> and I still go there today. I don't market up there anymore, right. uh, but we bleed out that far, Madison. Um, and then, you know, E-Town, I got a guy that lives you know, out on the other side of UofL, so he covers pretty much all of our southern Kentucky stuff. So, yeah, pretty pretty, pretty much a 100-mile radius, I'd say, around Louisville. Nice. Yeah. Nice. No, I like to say, I've, I've watched you all and, and just always there. You know, you're Try always there. Yeah. Try um, not to miss that phone call. And... No. No, <laughs> so I, and I can't think of one that's really went bad uh, yeah. in our time. I know we had one that it wasn't your all's fault, a... It was a bank repo, and I think we turned the water on for the inspection. Then I forgot to go back and turn it off, and the bank called me and said, "There's about thirty thousand dollars gallons of water. It's escaped our meter. Can you?" So when I did that have more than one home? It was like yeah. three homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One. yeah so we couldn't even figure out where to shut it off right. at. <laughs> It wasn't your fault. It was yeah. something we turned on. And, uh, you know, in home inspections, usually we turn them on, we turn them off, right. you know, because we're, we're the agent or the seller. Yeah. Right. But with that one being vacant, I just hadn't got it turned off. And then when I went to turn it off, that didn't work either. Because yeah. like you said, yeah. it was like three homes. Yeah, I think we right. were advertising three for one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's been a minute. Yeah. That's been a while. Yeah. 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 That was back in repo days. Well, I've had it happen. I learned, you know, so these home inspectors first start out and i was one of them you know bend the rules do whatever it takes to satisfy that agent or whatever and so i had a real estate agent i think she's gone these days but she was on me about getting this home the water had been off and of course i refused to turn it on and so i'm coming back from Crothersville or somewhere and this was in new albany trying to make my home it's about getting dark and she's like we finally got the water on is there any way you could possibly tonight you know so i'm like okay so so i boogie down there well it's not on <clears throat> so i call her the water's not on she said well the the meter's right there in the driveway where you park your car. It's easy to turn on, and I give you permission to turn it on. So I turned it on. Mm-hmm. By the time I got to the front door, and I'm talking 20 feet, there's water coming down the <laughs> upper steps. The hot water heater pressure relief valves popped off, shooting across the kitchen. I mean, it was a flipping mess. And uh, I ended up having to, I ended up costing me some money on that I one. I figured they probably hit you yeah. for the bill. Yeah. So, 
that was the stick to your rules. Very last time <laughs> favors are not done like that. Yeah. I don't blame you. William, what's the best way to get a hold of you if one of our clients want to either have you do a pre-inspection as a yeah. seller or if they're yeah. a buyer working with an agent? What's, yeah. what's we can the best way to get hold of uh, uh, Certainty Inspections or Certainty Home Inspections, either one, .com. You can schedule right there online, get your quote and all that stuff, or simply give us a call. Toll free, 866-417-9591. Myself or Sherry, I'll answer the phone and get you, get you scheduled. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Look forward to doing some more inspections with Absolutely. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. My pleasure. For more local real estate information, please like and subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.